What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Uh, we're going to be doing a mock draft with some of the industry experts over on Instagram. Uh, never too early to do a mock draft with everyone staying home due to COVID-19. I uh, figured it would be a great time to do the first mock draft of the year. So we're going to be doing a 12-team mock draft going 12 rounds. Uh, no defense and kickers in this one. No reason to do those in mock draft. This is full PPR. Quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, tight end, flex, and five bench spots. Pretty standard there. Uh, let's go through round by round. Um, I'll speed up the video in between some picks here. But we see the first pick overall, Saquon Barkley and then Christian McCaffrey. No surprise there to see those two guys go. A little bit surprised to see Saquon go over Christian McCaffrey, especially with Teddy Bridgewater coming uh, back in. I do think that um, Christian McCaffrey could be in line for even more targets this year, but uh, definitely can't go wrong with either of those guys there. So... I joined in at the five slot. Um, normally, like being uh, either right in the middle or right in right on the ends. So, uh, what I typically look to do when I'm drafted from the five slot, obviously, is we're just going to play the draft. So, I'm guessing Michael Thomas is going to go with one of the next two picks, and that's going to leave us with either Ezekiel Elliott or Alvin Kamara or Dalvin Cook, and we'll pick between those three guys. So when I get to my pick, we'll go over it there. All right, so as I said, we see here now that Dalvin Cook and Ezekiel Elliott both went. So now I gotta choose between Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. Uh, I really like the running backs in the second and third round, so I'm just gonna take Michael Thomas. I definitely employ the take the best receiver approach. Now I know um, that doesn't always seem to turn out that way, but Michael Thomas has, has been getting consistently better each year. They just locked down Drew Brees for another year. Yes, Alvin Kamara was dealing with a lot of injuries, but I feel like, again, especially drafting this early, there's a lot of rookie running backs that we can grab for a great value in the fourth and fifth round. We'll change a little bit as the ADP shifts, but we see DeAndre Hopkins, the second receiver to go. Going to be pretty interesting to see if his ADP falls at all now that he's uh, been traded to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, probably not going to see the same amount of upside that he's had with the Texans, but I do think that he still ends up being a pretty productive player uh, as we go on. But um, So taking Michael Thomas obviously puts us in a spot where we're hoping that uh, we at least have a decent amount of running backs fall to us. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that in the second round we can grab a guy like a Miles Sanders or an Austin Eckler still as a running back too. And even if not, we, Kenyon Drake is still there as well, who is going to be the lead guy there in Arizona. So my running back two, I'm not too worried about. We'll see who ends up falling for us to take as a running back one. I'd be happy with Leonard Fournette, Derrick Henry, Aaron Jones. So if we can grab two of those guys, I think that would be ideal. If not, though, if, as we see, Derrick Henry goes as we're talking about him, if everyone continues going running back heavy, then we're just going to zig where everyone else is zagging and keep hammering on the receivers so we'll see how this goes we see Devonte adams goes at pick 111 so at this point and then we see chris godwin go at 112 so uh, eight running backs four receivers go no tight ends and then aaron jones goes at the 201 so running backs definitely definitely a little bit slim uh, we haven't seen any tight ends go yet so if we want to go super contrarian we can take travis kelsey uh, or uh, george kittle here but um, not going to think about that one too much yet. We'll see what ends up happening uh, in the next five or next. Yeah, after the next five picks. Uh, at this point, I'm super hoping that uh, Leonard Fournette comes because otherwise there's not really any running backs that I'm looking to take here in the second round. Uh, Josh Jacobs, I could potentially go as well, but um, just not as excited for what Oakland is going to be, or I guess, yeah, I guess it's still technically Oakland right now, or is it Las Vegas? Not sure. It's going to be hard to switch that over, but we'll see. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to you guys when we get back to our pick. All right, we're now one pick away. As we can see, there's been a massive run on running backs, which has been kind of insane. Um, so at this point, I am debating whether we even want to push the envelope and uh, take Kenyon Drake in this round. But um, like I said, we still have... A massive uh, value play here we could take 
a guy like Mike Evans, or we could even go tight ends. But it's looking like at this point, we might still be able to sneak a tight end coming back around, but screw it. This is the first mock draft of the year. Let's do something super contrary and we'll take Travis Kelsey. So we begin with Michael Thomas and Travis Kelsey. Uh, and oh, there goes Kenyon Drake. So all the running backs are gone. Uh, yeah, and that's we're gonna. I guess we're just gonna go zero running back at this point. So woohoo! Finally, see another wide receiver go. We see Kenny Galladay go over the likes of Mike Evans, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Amari Cooper, and Odell Beckham. So um, definitely a bit gun shy on Juju Smith-Schuster, who last year was pushing up into the first round. We see he could even fall into the third round now. But I mean. I totally understand. We don't really know what Big Ben is going to come back and look like. So I understand why people are a bit hesitant to pull the trigger on a guy like Juju. And then we see Patrick Mahomes go at the 212. That seems a little bit high, but uh, overall, you know, going with the contrarian play here with everybody going running back in the first two rounds, just shoring up those other spots sometimes ends up being all the difference in the world. You see Amari Cooper go there, one pick away. I mean, at this point, the running backs are definitely slim pickings, but we want to at least grab somebody. So I'm hesitant to go Le'Veon Bell just because of how poorly the uh, New York Jets with Adam Gase deploys their skill position players there. Um, but definitely not trusting Karrion Johnson. This is definitely going to change a lot too. Todd Gurley right now is looking to be traded. We don't know whether he's going to be traded to a poor situation or not, but we're kind of making the drafts as it stands right now. So as it stands, I'll go Todd Gurley. Who cares? Make sure we got a running back there that we know Todd Gurley still has talent. He still put up a pretty decent show towards the end of the season last year and uh, still going to be some decent running back values later on. We'll see how far down we can get the likes of Damian Williams. Um, John Ray Swift is still down there. We don't know what team he's going to end up going to. Darius Geis might finally see a resurgence. Kareem Hunt uh, showed pretty well in PPR last year. So again, this is uh, kind of your first peek into what a zero running back strategy is going to look like obviously not going completely zero running backs in the first three rounds but taking the top receiver and top tight end uh, michael thomas and travis kelsey just locking down those positions also forgot to highlight jonathan taylor went at the three two not surprised by that one at all although that one will definitely be defined by what team he ends up getting drafted to uh, in the NFL draft. So pretty interesting to see if he ends up going to a situation where he's going to be the lead back. This could rise even farther. Jonathan Taylor is one of the best running back prospects that we've seen come out of uh, the, you know, from the NCAA in a very long time. So uh, not surprised to see him already at 32, even though he hasn't even been drafted yet. We see how far as well, guys like Odo Beckham and DJ Moore have fallen. I wouldn't be surprised if they both went here. Um, we see Odo Beckham go at the 312, and we'll see who ends up going at the 4-1, but those guys definitely fell a bit too far. Assuming he leaves him for me, we know that his ADP is gonna go up. Uh, but <laughs> Adam Thielen is the guy that I'm heavily looking at right now. Um, but there is also a heavy need for running back for me right now. So, but there's just been so many running backs that have been taken. I'm debating. James Conner did have a few good games towards the end. I just don't really like his risk profile, but need to make sure we lock down a few running backs at this point. I just want to make sure I don't miss out on Adam Thielen, but I think we might be able to slip him back in at the 5-5. We'll go James Conner. Win some, you lose some. I was hoping Adam Thielen would come back, but obviously his ADP is going to continue to rise. Adam Thielen should be a third round pick, so I got really cute there. Obviously, first mock of the year. Won't let that mistake happen again. Would much rather have Adam Thielen than James Conner, uh, even though we already have Michael Thomas. Want to make sure you get that second wide receiver spot locked down. So, bit disappointed there, but 
still might be able to grab us a uh, Michael Gallup or a DJ Chark or even a Robert Woods, who I all really like this year. Uh, won't be getting DJ Chark, he just went, but I'd be fine with Tyler Boyd uh, playing with um, Joe Burrow. Definitely going to see a massive boost to his value. Michael Gallup is going to do great this year. Um, and then, um, I mean, Tyler Lockett has been pretty up and down uh, ever since he's come into the NFL. So not super excited about him. It definitely has a wide receiver too, more exciting than a wide receiver one. But uh, hopefully Tyler Boyd or Michael Gallup falls to me. I would be more than happy with either of those guys as my wide receiver too. Well, as we saw, Tyler Boyd went, but we're going to go Michael Gallup here. He showed a lot of promise last year in his second year in Dallas. This should be an even better year for him. Uh, yes, Amari Cooper did just get his deal, but there's going to be plenty of passing volume in that offense for two receivers to go around. Michael Gallup looked phenomenal last year, and Amari Cooper's always been up and down, so if Michael Gallup may even be more consistent than Amari Cooper this year, let's go Michael Gallup. Other option here would have been Christian Kirk or Debo Samuel. Now that I see Debo Samuel, I'm already regretting my pick. That's why you do mock drafts, that way you go through and redo <laughs> where he messed up. So if somehow by some miracle Debo Samuel falls back to me in the next round, then we'll be taking him for sure. But definitely make sure Debo Samuel is picked up in the fifth round. I don't know why his ADP is all the way down to pick 59. It should be much higher than that. And Zach Ertz has actually fallen really far. So we see rounding out the fifth round now we had DJ Chark go and then Mark Andrews. So that would be the third tight end. And we got Tyler Boyd, Chris Carson, and then as I said, took Michael Gallup, should have taken uh, Debo Samuel. And then we see Kerryon Johnson, David Montgomery, David Johnson all go before Mark Ingram, Kareem Hunt, and Damian Williams. Don't understand that at all. Uh, we see Kareem Hunt here and Damian Williams go on the uh, in the 12 slot there. So really like both of those picks. Definitely uh, like the strategy there if you wait even longer on running back. So see, we panicked a little bit too early picked up James Conner. So looking back at this draft, if I could redo what I did, obviously this is why you mock, I would stick with my first three picks. I'm happy with Michael Thomas, Travis Kelsey, and Todd Gurley, but I would go Adam Thielen here at the 4-8, and then with the 5-5, I would take Kareem Hunt or Damian Williams, and then I'd be fine with either of those guys as my running back too in PPR league for sure. And then, uh, you know, rather much rather have Adam Thielen than Michael Gallup as my wide receiver too. So just note words to the wise, uh, do a lot of mocks and it helps you from overthinking yourself like we just did here. But hey, first mock, expecting there to be some mistakes, owning it, uh, that's what I should have done. And as the things start to get really interesting, we still have Jarvis Landry and Christian Kirk here. We also have T.Y. Hilton and A.J. Green who have fallen so incredibly far. Um, <laughs> I feel like from an upside standpoint, we're looking at the most upside with guys like Christian Kirk and T.Y. Hilton. Uh, A.J. Green, obviously, lots of upside there with Joe Burrow. Um, but, man, <laughs> I just can't not take T.Y. Hilton in the seventh round, especially now that Phillip Rivers is going to be throwing the ball. We know that Phillip Rivers loves to hyper-target one receiver. T.Y. Hilton is the clear wide receiver one there so don't be surprised if ty houghton has the same season as keenan allen did last year which would be heavily worth a seventh round pick all right we'll recap the sixth and seventh round here then we got uh we already looked through most of the sixth round we jumped back around to the seventh round we saw cd lamb will fuller and dak prescott go and then jerry judy so both of the big named wide receivers coming out of the draft don't know where they're going yet then we saw Darius Geis go after I took T.Y. Hilton, uh, Hunter Henry, Raheem Mostert, uh, Joss Allen, Daryl Henderson, Sean Watson, A.J. Green went at the 7-12. That just seems a little bit ridiculous, but he didn't play a game last year, so I understand why people are panicking on him. Then we got Dallas Goddard, Sony Michelle, Jared Goff, Noah Fant, Christian Kirk. Right now, we're definitely going to continue to employ the weight on quarterback strategy here we've got one team with two quarterbacks for some reason and then we have uh one two three teams that don't have a quarterback right now all right now i'm back on the clock we see tyler higby go who cares uh so here's the question 
do we believe that Rashad Penny will be healthy going into it? And do we believe that Rashad Penny will not have been supplanted by another running back coming into the season? I don't know that either of those two things are true, but at this point, we're just going with the rosters as they are. So we can either do that. We could take a running back like a Clyde Edwards Hilaire, or we could take Jordan Howard, but I think Jordan Howard will still be here in a few rounds just based on his ADP right now. Screw it, let's just go Rashad Penny. Um, again, like I said, this this will change. If Rashad Penny is not looking like he's going to be ready by the time the season starts, or the Seahawks have drafted another running back, then uh, this will totally change the entire landscape. But the Seahawks, Seattle Seahawks have been a running team. They've tried to be a running team for some stupid reason, even though uh, they have Russell Wilson, who's been fantastic. They always try to run the ball way too much. And Rashawn Petty was actually looking really good when he started to take over that lead role. That injury that he suffered, the ACL injury was you know, brutal, sucked for his season. And like I said, if he's not healthy going into the season, then definitely uh, going to be a little bit more of a gamble here. But overall, if he ends up, uh, if they go into the season with Chris Carson and Rashad Penny as their running back one and two, I would bank on Rashad Penny being the better running back to own, especially at that decreased price from 5'4 to 8'8". Jarvis Landry goes all the way all the way to the 812. Even though he finished as a uh, wide receiver two last year, he's still dropping all the way to the end of the eighth round. I don't know if people are concerned about Austin Hooper coming into the mix, but just seems a little bit ridiculous for him to fall that far. For of the top four running backs, there's one left. I'm going to take Cam Akers here. Again, we don't know what team he's going to go to, just like any of. Oh, uh, any other running backs right now, but Cam Akers ends up being in that big four with DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, and Jonathan Taylor. Able to nab him in the ninth round. My guess is if he goes anywhere near a semblance of seeing starting time anytime soon, there's no way he's going to be drafted all the way back in the ninth round. So uh, shoring up some of our earlier riskier running back picks in Todd Gurley and James Conner with some rookie help will probably continue to hammer the running back since we have such a solid core of wide receivers with Michael Thomas, Michael Gallup, Devontae Parker, and T.Y. Hilton. No real reason to continue hitting, hitting wide receiver too much. We got tight end locked down with Travis Kelsey, so we'll have to nab a quarterback at some point, but the remainder of our picks are really just going to be high upside running back plays from here on out. Guys that are an injury away from stealing the whole show. That's how you want to do your typical zero running back starts. When you start strong at other positions, you just need to make sure you get one guy that hits. Because if you draft the next Alvin Kamara type running back that goes in the later rounds, uh, last year we saw Kenyon Drake come on late towards the end of the season, won a lot of people fantasy leagues. Those are the kind of picks that can make or break your team when you start heavy on the wide receiver and tight end or quarterback position. So that's definitely who we're going to continue to target. Um, look here. Naeem Hines is an interesting name there with Philip Rivers coming into town. He could see a lot more of that Austin Eckler type workload. Um, let's see who else we got here. Uh, Duke Johnson, I, I think his value is going to go through the toilet with David Johnson there, but watch him end up being the main running back because Bill Bryland doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, James White is pretty much out now with Tom Brady's there until we see who they end up getting as a quarterback. Devonta Freeman looked pretty done last year, so even if he goes on a team and gets a decent contract, I don't know that it's going to be worth much. Uh, Denver will most likely address their running back uh, spot, so taking the running back two here behind Philip Lindsay, not really interested in it. San Francisco is likely going to do some shakeups. Tariq Cohen definitely has some upside, uh, but probably not going to really risk it on him. So taking guys like Chase Edmonds or Naeem Hines uh, are definitely going to be the strategy that I would want to employ here. There's not really many other guys. Maybe Gus Edwards. I know I personally like Justin Hill, Justice Hill a lot, but as long as Gus Edwards is there, they, the Ravens do seem 
perfectly content to continue to roll him out. We've got Boston Scott here. Again, we're just we're not sure where the rookies are gonna go, so trying to nab some guys that have high upside and have a potential to have a decent amount of playing time. And we do need to start thinking about when we might grab a quarterback, but you, as you can see, we've waited and waited and waited. We're in the 10th round and we can still grab Baker Mayfield, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan. Uh, we still have Ryan Tannehill, Joe Burrow, Drew Brees. Like I have no reason to reach for a quarterback as long as one of those guys is there Yes, they're not going to put up the same type of statistical production that you get out of a Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson, but uh, I'll do a video on this later, guys. Every year, there's a quarterback that goes around the 10th round that ends up massively outproducing his fantasy value. And uh, we also see with Matt Ryan, he kind of does this year in, year out thing where he goes inside the top five and then outside the top five. So Matt Ryan could be that guy. Um, I've before the trade with DeAndre Hopkins, I was really thinking that Kyler Murray would end up being that guy. Obviously, now we see his ADP has jumped all the way up to the sixth round, which sucks. I think that will definitely be worth it. I think Kyler Murray has every potential to end up being the uh, Lamar Jackson of the 2020 season. So of all the quarterbacks that have gone, he's the only one that I think I would have paid the price that I did for him. Lamar Jackson going at the 4-6, I can definitely see that paying off. But Patrick Mahomes going in the second round, always going to be a bit of a risk, especially when you consider that he, uh, well, I mean, I don't know. Patrick Mahomes definitely is a game breaker, but we saw last year, especially, you know, suffering that injury that there's no such thing as a, as a guaranteed pick by any means. So taking a quarterback this early when you're able to take quarterbacks later, it's always a gamble. But if it pays off at, towards the end of the season, you're going to be much happier having Patrick Mahomes than some random guy as your quarterback. But we saw last year how many uh, teams uh, Ryan Tannehill ended up winning Super Bowls for. So we might just take him out of solidarity because of how, how much money he ended up winning me last year. I'll probably just end up taking Ryan Tannehill on the 11th. Uh, but first, first, we need to make sure we grab uh, one of these running backs that we're talking about. One name I, I totally missed here, but um, if they don't address the position, jo Justin Jackson, now that Melvin Gordon's going to be out, could be in line for a massive boost to his value as well. Yes, Austin Eckler will be there, but they like to run two running backs in that system. Uh, there's plenty of guys here that have a lot of upside um, but again we're looking for guys that could have a massive role with just one injury in front of them and with the exception of last year it's not like Austin Eckler has been the picture of health we'll take Justin Jackson here so now we have a pretty solid core of running backs that I'm happy with to go along with that stacked core of receivers and tight end Travis Kelsey Michael Thomas Michael Gallup Devontae Parker and T.Y. Hilton we back that up with Todd Gurley James Conner Rashad Penny Cam Akers and Justin Jackson Ah, hell, we'll take Aaron Rodgers. Why not? <laughs> Pause all the way to the 11th round. I mean, I don't think it was stay here assuming they address the wide receiver position either in the draft or in free agency. We could still see Robbie Anderson go here. We could still see a trade happen. Uh, but there's no way the Packers are going to let their wide receiver core stay as uh, depleted behind Devontae Adams that it was going into the season and Aaron Rodgers was still a top 12 quarterback even with that uh, despicable wide receiver situation so and also as we mentioned before Aaron Jones is definitely due for, for some touchdown regression so while I don't think Aaron Rodgers is anywhere near that top three quarterback tier that he used to fall into falling all the way to the 11th round it's yeah, it's kind of comical I think at this point, we actually haven't even seen, other than Will Fuller going in the seventh round, we haven't seen a single uh, Texans receiver go. So I think a lot of people are expecting them to uh, address that position in the draft, which I wouldn't be surprised. So if John Brown is here, I think the decision is made for me. John Brown was phenomenal last year. Yes, they have Stephon Diggs now, but uh, John Brown developed a lot of rapport last year with uh, Joss Allen. So that one's going to be pretty easy to go. Otherwise, we could jump down and grab Kenny Stills, 
who likely sees a massive boost to his targets this year with DeAndre Hopkins is 150 vacated targets guys in Houston. So someone's going to get those. It's not going to be Kiki QT. Yes, they signed Randall Cobb, but Randall Cobb has had one healthy season in like the past five years, but can't, I can't pass on John Brown. So that wraps it up. Got uh, Aaron Rodgers. We've got Todd Gurley, James Conner, Rashad Penny, Cam Akers, Justin Jackson at running back. We've got Michael Thomas, Michael Gallup, Devontae Parker, T.Y. Hilton, and John Brown at wide receiver. And we have Travis Kelsey at tight end. So like I said, going back, would have loved to take an Adam Thielen here at the 4-8 and then would have been just fine with taking Kareem Hunt here as my running back too or Damian Williams. Probably even probably have Damian Williams above Kareem Hunt. So if we were to run that back, it would be Michael Thomas, Travis Kelsey, Todd Gurley, uh, Damian Williams, Adam Thielen, Devontae Parker, T.Y. Hilton, Rashad Pennycamp, Akers, Justin Jackson, Aaron Rodgers, and John Brown. Pretty pumped with that. Uh, overall, I uh, happy with this team. Definitely think there's a few things I would have liked to do better. Um, Looking back, maybe it would have made more sense to take Kenyon Drake here. Maybe we would have had George Kittle fall the way, all the way back to us at the 3-5. Or even if he didn't, might have been better to just make sure we shore up a good running back position, especially to lock down there with Michael Thomas. But uh, you'll go take what you get. First mock draft of the year. Pretty happy with that. Hit me up in the comment section below. And let, you, let me know what surprises you the most about this ADP. I am going to minimize this and show you guys the full draft board just that way you can pause the video if you want and are curious how this went down. Obviously, this is going to change drastically as the season goes on, uh, as the offseason goes on, excuse me. Um, once we see where guys like Jonathan Taylor and some of the rookie wide receivers go, obviously their value is going to jump up or down based on where they go. Free agency isn't over. Todd Gurley might get traded. Odell Beckham might get traded. Um, <laughs> so we still don't know how this is all going to end up once uh, we get closer to August. But for a mock draft in March, I'll take what I can get. I think this is a pretty solid squad. Let me know what you guys think. We'll post some more of these mock drafts as we go on. Pretty excited to be doing that with these guys. Make sure you check them out on Instagram. Fantasy Football Mechanic, Fantasy Football Ology, uh, Sack Attack Podcast, Fantasy Football Line Light, Fantasy Football Mentor. Got the, sorry, I can't pronounce your name, bro. Lepisco Pop Show. <laughs> sorry. Next Level Fantasy Football, uh, Fantasy DJ. So a lot of these guys from Instagram, uh, happy to be doing a lot of these drafts with these guys. We're in a group. We'll be doing a lot of these. So be on the lookout for more of these going forward uh and we'll keep you posted so anyway thank you so much for checking us out hit that like and subscribe button helps support our channel as we continue to go further into the nfl draft season so thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.